Very good morning. Good morning to everyone. Welcome to Calvary. Um, we are glad to be together in worship, even though it's the second Sunday of January. In some ways, this feels like uh, the first Sunday of being back, of uh, gathering together, and of course, later in the service, uh, celebrating our tradition of Epiphany uh, with the Sacrament of Holy Communion. So we're so glad that we could be together in worship today. Uh, just a couple of announcements before we begin. Um, there is a new flower chart in the back as we begin a new year, if you're interested in uh, checking that out. There's some spaces. Um, today, there's a lot of things happening after church in different uh, forms. So if you are able to help to undecorate, um, we'll be doing that right after the service. Um, we do have some treats, and I'm glad to have Kathy back with um, where she she might be out actually preparing right now. Um, so Kathy Stout is, um, has been and, and continues to be our coffee steward. She's preparing some coffee and treats in the narthex, so welcome to join us for that. Um, then downstairs, uh, Jeff will be leading our adult Sunday school class as always, and our confirmation class um, will be meeting together in the adult Sunday school room. So we've invited um, anybody that would like to join us and join our confirmation class for our Moravian history field trip. Um, we'll be journeying off to Bethlehem uh, after we eat lunch together. So you're welcome to come down and share a sandwich with us, and um, then we'll be, we'll be journeying together um, for that, so please uh, join us if you're able. We'll be visiting the Moravian Museum. We have a experienced tour guide in my mom, <laughs> thank you, uh, leading us through. And uh, we're also, it's a beautiful day, so we'll get to see some outside sites in historic Bethlehem. So looking forward to that. Um, then just looking ahead into our January and February, Dining with Friends is happening in January. We, we had a host of different things that didn't allow us to do it before, so we're, we're back uh, January 31st. Talk to Sam or Sharon as soon as possible. Church Council will be the next weekend, February 5th, and we're also back with our potlucks. So uh, if you can sign up to bring something, the sign-ups are in the back, and we're looking forward to that. Um, Finally, uh, you might have noted that I had announced earlier about a sabbatical. We've changed a bit in that plans, but I will be taking much of next week off and the following weekend. So Josh will be ably leading us in worship and um, also here within the office for a few days next week. So looking forward to having him lead us and, uh, and lead worship and, and be here next week. Uh, whew, that was a lot of announcements. Anything else? Terry. And I'll, I'll repeat that for anybody worshiping at home. If Terry um, and Sue will be uh, leading this, and thanks to Terry, um, if you're worshiping at home or if you just need to and remember, uh, you're welcome to contact Terry or contact the office um, to sign up for, for something. So we're looking forward to potlucking. Thank you for, for doing that. Um, any others? Okay. Well, our watchword for the week, um, I wanted to share as we call ourselves into worship today. It's from Isaiah 42, verse 3. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly, wit, dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. May we turn to the God who we worship in faith, and as we come together, uh, invite God's presence and spirit among us.
Speaking of watchwords, our call to worship is the wa congregational watchword for 2023. Before I read it, I would just like to mention that watchwords are a beloved Moravian tradition. They date all the way back to our founding in 1727, when people would walk throughout the entire community carrying these by words of mouth. I'm happy to say that our tradition is much easier today, and if you have not yet gotten a watchword, there's an offering plate at the back just underneath the God is with us sign that has all of the watchwords. So if you have not yet taken a watchword, I encourage you to grab one on the way out, maybe use it as a bookmark or stick it on a refrigerator, and it's just a, a scripture passage to meditate on or to read throughout your day, throughout the year as you go. And I'm telling you that you'll be surprised the number of times you read it and go, I needed that today. So I encourage you to pick one up on your way out. The congregational watchword for 2023 comes from 2 Chronicles 18, verse 4. Inquire first for the word of the Lord. I invite you to stand and join me as we pray together the liturgy for Epiphany, found on page 65. creatures, Lord, will praise you, and all your people will give you thanks. They will speak of the glory of your royal power and tell of your might. Everyone will know your mighty deeds and the glorious majesty of your kingdom. Your rule is eternal, and you are king forever. You, Lord, are righteous in all you do, merciful in all your acts. You are near to those who call to you, who call to you with sincerity. You supply the needs of all who honor you. You hear the cries and save them. We will praise you, Lord. All creation praise your holy name forever. Please be seated. With sincere hearts and open minds, let us now acknowledge the sin that entangles us and prevents us from doing God's will. Compassionate Lord, you, you call us to a higher standard than we have achieved. We therefore know an honest confession of those thoughts, words, and deeds which have missed the mark. Within our families, we have loved imperfectly. Among sisters and brothers in the church, we have not fully walked in the right. 
often our congregations have not reflected the, the rich diversity of people in our communities. In our witness to the world, our lives have not adequately testified to your redeeming power. Forgive us, gracious Lord, for permitting ourselves to be distracted from the goal of our discipleship. Heal our hearts and restore us to you, first love. There is no condemnation now for those who live in union with Christ Jesus. Hear the word of our Lord. I do not condemn you. Go, but do not sin again. Be still. God created the heavens and stretched them out, fashioned the earth and all that lives there, and gave life and breath to all its people. And now the Lord God says to his servant, I, the Lord, called you, giving you power to see that justice is done on the earth. Through you I will make a covenant of all evil. Through you I will bring light to the nations. You will open the eyes of the blind and set free those who sit in dark prisons. God shows no partiality to race or culture. All who have reverence for him and do what is right are acceptable to God. Let's give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For in our union with Christ, he has blessed us by giving us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly world. Let us praise God for his glorious grace, for the free gift he gave us in his dear Son. How great is the grace of God, which he has given us in such large measure. This is the good news. Through Jesus' death and resurrection, all people may participate in God's blessings. We are members of the same body we share in the promises God made through you. There is no longer rich or poor, black or white, male or female, for we are all one in union with Christ Jesus. If we belong to Christ, then we are members of God's family and we will see what He has promised. Please be seated. 
We pause at this moment in our liturgy for the prayers of the people. What are the joys and concerns on your hearts this morning? Um, just two prayers of Thanksgiving. Um, just Nancy, it's great to see you. And um, Heather led a discernment drumming circle on Friday night. And while I begged off because of a long week, um, I've heard good things. And um, thank you for leading us in that in here. So um, two thank yous. And this is my last time. She says that. But yes. Is it really? <laughs> Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord of bright and abiding light, you have shown us in the person of Jesus, your son, a new way to live. You have poured your light into the world and asked us to live in that light rather than run and hide in the darkness of our doubts and despairs. You promise to be our light for all our days, and we place our trust in you. The journey in this light is risky. It means that we will have to be very serious about our service to you, giving you our best and offering hope and light to others. In this new year, we bring to you the names and situations of others for whom light seems to be a stranger. For Robert, for Rachel, and for all those who are battling COVID or illnesses, for those who work in the facilities, the hospitals, the nursing homes, watch over them, comfort them, and be with them. Lord, we also offer tremendous thanks for the milestones of birthdays, for Jeff's mom, for Blair's mom, and for Fred. It's a joy to celebrate the new year of life. Let your light shine, bring hope, bring healing, but also help us to be bearers of that light in all that we do. For we ask all of this in your precious and holy name. Amen. We return to our liturgy on page 70, in case you forgot where we were. Let us offer intercessions and petitions for the needs of the world. Lord of Jesus Christ, as disciples called to your service, we pray for the salvation of all. Lead us to bear witness to friends and neighbors in this community. Fill our words and manner of life 
with the convincing power of your spirit. Intensify our love for all people, that your discipleship may be confirmed and genuine. Through our obedience to your call, bestow on many the faith to be saved. Give our life to the blessing and witness in all places. May those who suffer because they have named you as Lord be strengthened. Encouraged and moved by patience, those who have left their people to proclaim the gospel to those yet unreached. Savior, Lord, and church, always grow. Remember. Bring multitudes from every people to bow and confess that you are Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We stand. I looked and there was a great multitude. No one could count all the people. They were from every race, tribe, nation, and language. And they stood in front of the throne and of the Lamb, holding palm branches in their hands. They called out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. Grace, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, and mind belong to our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we will now collect the tithes and our offerings. That's okay. opportunity to share our time, our talents, and our treasure so that your kingdom may be built here on earth. May we use these gifts wisely for that goal. We do this in your name.
As we approach a uh, new month, we also have, um, you'll see a note about where our joyful noise will be going this month. Um, we're sharing with the outreach team of the Lehigh Conference of Churches, doing various outreach and what we would, street outreach is what you might term it. Um, those that need help during the hot and cold seasons, exploring permanent housing options. As you notice, there are not any particular young children today. And despite my appearance, you're just going to have to pretend, I guess. I'm not going to lie and say that that wasn't fun. <laughs> Today's lesson is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road.
done, Kings. Thank you. So I am amazed, thank you again for, for singing that. I'm amazed that that hymn, our probably most famous epiphany hymn, certainly one of the ones that maybe many of us is the only one we could name um, that features the wise men, is not found in our hymnal. Um, and so I'm very grateful to that. I was thinking of singing it today, and then I looked at the special music, and I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I didn't think we'd get three kings, though, so thank you, three kings. <laughs> And don't let it go to your heads, all right, uh, because we'll learn about those kings. So again, um, thank you for singing We Three Kings, um, one of our only epiphany hymns that um, we're probably able to name, uh, referencing one of the, uh, the only uh, spot that these three wise men are found in the reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter two, the only place they appear in our Bible. So I wanted to talk about what we might know when we, we think of the word epiphany, when you might be asked, well, what does that mean? Uh, when you're asked to tell us about what does we three, or what does the wise men, what are they all about? Um, and it's interesting of how much might be found in what we heard Peter read from Matthew's gospel. And I'm wondering how much is found in our traditions and our learned memories and maybe uh, connected to this hymn of We Three Kings. So the title itself is a place to start. In the gospel reading, what you heard Peter read, do you hear these wise men referenced as kings at all? No, their Greek word is magi that's used, uh, meaning a learned one, an astrologer perhaps, one who studied the stars, uh, one who might be of a priestly class and sometimes is a connection to some Eastern ancient religions, uh, but never are they called a king? That comes from much later traditions, from other writings, from people telling stories about this story, um, calling them kings. And then the three, I had to kind of look at this again, but there is no reference in Matthew's gospel to there being only three kings. We get that simply because they bear these three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and maybe somewhere along the line we found it more convenient for our little nativity scenes, maybe, to put those three uh, individual kings in there, or uh, three wise men, but never do we have that they're only three. The gifts as well are not spelled out um, in what they actually mean, but again, as this anthem has, um, has proclaimed and tradition has taken it, this, the gifts that they bring come with symbolism. I was joking, you probably might have seen the cartoon if there were three wise women, they would have brought diapers, a casserole, and some chocolate. But there is symbolism and purpose to the gifts that the three wise men bring gold uh, being for a king or maybe to finance this family that has to leave because of Herod's craziness that's about to happen. Um, we have frankincense, which is given and burned in honor of a deity, right, of a divine one, um, certainly uh, foreshadowing what Jesus is. And then myrrh, the ultimate foreshadowing of it all, a strange gift to give to a baby used in, in embalming oils uh, to prepare a body for burial in those days. But again, we hear in the words of, of our anthem um, what the myrrh was about and what it would mean for Jesus's and what we know of what happened to Jesus. So this hymn, of course, stretches the story, tells the story in further detail, does what we all like to do with stories and in fleshing them out. Um, and as interesting as it is maybe uh, to pick out some of those facts and find whether or not it's three or 30 kings and where they've come from. There's one thing in our hymn that resonates with me and I think brings the story of Epiphany uh, into its main focus, into its meaning and what it says to my heart. And it's, it's found in the refrain. Star of wonder, star of light, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Star of wonder. And I wonder if that is the place and what the wise men might teach us of how much do we wonder? Now we might wonder, wander, uh, right? But how much do we pause and wonder 
um, stop what we're doing, stop the prescribed actions of our day, the checklists, the plans, stop the routines and pause. Pause in nature, pause in a relationship, pause to wonder in all thanksgiving. How much in our life, not only here at 10 a.m., but in our lives, do we pause and wonder, it might be at a star, it might be at the full moon that we saw this week, but how much do we wonder? Westward leading, still proceeding. So the wise men, we know, stopped. They stopped what they were doing, coming from the east, far away. They stopped what they were doing and they wondered. They didn't have, I don't think, information about everything that that star would have meant to them. You know, they had to ask King Herod, about this star that they thought prophesied the birth of a king, but what, to, what this meant, they didn't have all of the information, uh, but they felt that pull in their hearts. Um, they felt that pull to turn their wonder into action, um, to, to listen to the pull of the spirit in their hearts and let it lead them to where it might be going. Um, again, they didn't know that they were going to be going to Bethlehem. They only came to Jerusalem. Um, but they were able to be led, to proceed. And again, where does that fall into our lives? Do we, do we follow those spiritual yearnings? Are we willing to ask questions um, and maybe be comfortable living in the questions, living in the journeys, um, able to walk, as we might say, in faith when we don't know everything in sight uh, right away. Now, finally, ends, our, our chorus ends with guide us, guide us to thy perfect light. Um, and here's where as Christians and as people, we probably want to not be guided so much as we want to be finished on our journeys, right? It's not always comfortable to be on a journey. Um, and yet I think that's the reality of, of human existence is that we're all facing these journeys in some way or the other. And we think about the stories of our nativity. We think about the shepherds. They didn't go on a long journey. They were out there in the fields of Bethlehem watching their sheep, but they still had to pause and, and wonder and listen to the angels and then go on, even if it physically was a short journey, to the stable. Uh, sometimes journeys, though, might take a long time. And that was what we think happened with the case of the wise men. They're coming from the east. Been rumors that that might be Persia, might be even China. Um, whatever it was, it took some time. So sometimes journeys take some time to follow stars, to not have all of the information, to not know really where we are going to end up ultimately, um, not seeing that perfect light for some time. Again, I think in our experiences, and I see this so often, that so much of us and so much of our journeys often seem to be defeated by the fact that it's not exactly playing out the way we rehearsed it or the way we thought life was gonna play out. You start a project and you think it's gonna take you here. You start a business and it's gonna take you here. And we become defeated if the journey, instead of a straight line, wiggles and curves and even takes a U-turn once in a while. The question is, in faith, do we continue on that journey? As we say in our motto, we say, come in faith. Um, again, taking that step, celebrating maybe instead of what isn't, what is? What are the good things? Rather than looking at what's missing, what's in need, what happened in life, taking pause and taking that, uh, maybe that surplus inventory instead of the deficit inventory you might say in financial terms, but what do we have here? So star of wonder, where do you pause and wonder, no matter what the facts are, if there's three or 30 wise men, no matter if they are kings or simply just learned people, astrologers, I love, and I probably used this before, but Walt Whitman um, shares a beautiful poem where he talks about maybe magi, he calls them astrologers, or astronomers, entitled, When I Heard the Learned Astronomer. When I learned, when I heard the learned astronomer, when the proofs, the figures, were ranged in columns before me, 
when I was shown the charts and diagrams to add, divide, and measure them, when I was sitting here and hearing the astronomer, where he lectured with much applause in the lecture room, how soon unaccountable I became, tired and sick, till rising and gliding out, I wandered off by myself. And in the mystical, moist night air, and from time to time, I looked up in the perfect silence at the stars. The star of wonder. So in just a moment, I'm gonna invite you to the sacrament of Holy Communion. Um, there's some pause here. This is a, a celebration that we do, a sacrament we call it, where there is a pause and to ask, are we talking about facts or are we talking about moments of wonder? Bread is made flesh, cup becomes blood. Churches over the centuries, of course, have thought about how is Jesus made flesh in physical form, in spiritual form. Churches over the centuries have fought and have divided and split, and people have left over how Jesus is present, over, we might say, the facts or what we know about where he is in the sacrament. So I thought about this, and, and maybe what I've always appreciated about our understanding of, of communion in the terms of wonder. Um, back when I was in seminary, it was a Moravian pastor, is the now deceased, the Reverend Al Frank, and Blair knows Brother Al. Um, and Al was once asked about, and you have to know Al to kind of picture him saying this in his gruff manner, but Al was asked about well, how did Jesus appear in the sacraments? Um, what, what was the Moravian understanding of Jesus' uh, uh, body and blood in the sacraments? How did he appear? And he said, well, Jesus appears however Jesus wants to. And he kind of turned away. And it was something like that. And I know maybe that gets at my point. We won't settle on a fact, but maybe Jesus appears however Jesus wants to or maybe differently in each of our lives. We won't settle on the fact that if for you, Jesus appears in the words of scripture in the study of our, our holy text, or if for you, Jesus appears in the presence and movement of the spirit as you plug yourself in to the Holy Spirit in some way, nature, worship, praise. Perhaps Jesus appears in the communion of brothers and sisters in the way we gather together. Perhaps there's another way that Jesus appears. I think that's the gift of wondering, of pausing, of faithful journeying, of allowing Jesus to come. He might surprise you, as I imagine the wise men showing up are a bit surprised at this baby. He might challenge you. He might fill your heart with grace as he did his mother's. However Jesus comes, um, allow our hearts to be open this epiphany to this gift of grace, this gift of wonder, this gift of light. So, amen. So again, we invite Jesus to come to us um, to abide with us in the sacrament of Holy Communion, uh, the sacrament that we traditionally celebrate um, in this Epiphany season. So we will be sharing together in communion on page 183. And I will point out now, and as we transition to each hymn, that we will, for the sharing of the bread, we'll uh, shift to the hymn starting on page 186, and the sharing of the cup will be 190, just to give us a little variety on our singing. So um, join with me as we share in our sacrament of Holy Communion. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please stand.
may be seated for prayer. Holy Spirit, you come in many forms. Thank you for your gift of Christ, the child born to us many years ago, God made flesh, the teacher, the challenger, the comforter, friend and savior. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming again to be with us in the presence of this meal, to be with us however you choose to be. But however you come, we know that we are all invited and we are all loved. May we rest in that love as we pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus Christ taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
our Lord Jesus Christ said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. by your divine presence, by the holy sacraments, by all the merits of your life, sufferings, death, and resurrection. Bless and comfort us, vicious Lord and God. Amen. And in the same way, after supper, our Lord Jesus Christ took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. You may be seated. Please stand. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, drink from this, all of you. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ, the Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant to us your peace. 
Amen. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 